Hey there y'all, this is Angie M, the Life by Angie M, and I'm realizing I did not get to my planner play that was supposed to go up earlier today. I was just, I was exhausted after the kiddo went to bed on Friday and just did not get to it. I had a major allergy flare, which has been happening more and more the longer I've been locked into my house. And I'm probably gonna have to go see the allergist because I suspect I'm going to need an actual prescription medication as opposed to the over-the-counter stuff that has worked in the past is what is what it is and then I didn't get to plan or play even though I kind of had some things so it is what it is I've also got limited time right now and my husband is in the bathroom so you're probably gonna hear him brushing his teeth you know what I don't care anymore I gotta do this when I gotta do this I was behind on some work stuff so much of my daughter's nap time today has been devoted to getting caught up on that. Something I picked up at my local grocery store and then I'm gonna start working with her on is this preschool big fun workbook. She actually knows her letters and numbers fairly well and is pretty good at counting shapes, colors. So I wanna get her matching in some of the more advanced stuff and also start working with her more on, on actually being able to work in more of a, a book setting. I think she will find it fun. I think she would find it more fun if I found some Pink Fong or Hoagie workbooks. So you know, where where is Pink Fong and Hoagie out of? Is that South Korea? I'm sure they got some workbooks somewhere, I know. But I'm just saying if they don't, that might be a market they wanna tap into. But I just, I think this will be neat to help her put bigger pictures together. So I am rocking that. You hear my kitty kitty? And then while I was looking at the school supply stuff, found something totally unrelated for, for mommy. I would have loved this as a kid, but Crayola has, so Crayola has been branching off from what I've seen from a lot of their standard stuff, or maybe they're not branching off. Maybe it's just, I'm finally seeing in store things that maybe I wasn't seeing before for relatively inexpensive. So I have always loved multi-click pens that have colors and these are, their Crayola Take Notes line. So this is, these are for slightly older children, their pens. But these are the big ones with the multicolors are ombre pens, so you can do different colors, which is neat. And they actually, they're gel, they write very well. I'm super excited and I'll show that in a second. And then they have these color change highlighters, which is a marker type pen. It's the plastic tip on one end and then clear color change highlighter ink on the other and what these remind me of the the color change ink reminds me more of their um i forget i forget what it's called the the crayola color safe the paper that the color only shows up on the paper it reminds me of that kind of technology so when i saw these i wanted to play with them kind of kind of see what they could could offer on the side here I'm definitely more in love with the pens than I am with the highlighters, but I'm a pen person, so highlighters kind of don't always do it for me. They're more, highlighters are utilitarian. They're something that you need. I also, part of the reason I was in that aisle wasn't just, I wasn't looking necessarily for anything for my daughter in particular. I was looking for correction tape because I don't have any and I find that I need it. And that was where I found the highlights workbook, I'm, which I'm super excited about. They had a kindergarten edition, but I think will be good to start with the preschool and see how she does with it. If there are certain sections she's great at, then I can always pick up the kindergarten one. Or like I said, ping pong and hoagie. Yay, I still have my filming intro, outro. I might do an intro to this because I'm liking my makeup today. I used my, my NARS Exhibit A, but I mixed it with the other matte that I have, NARS Amour, which is pinker, and I really like the color I got. So... So yeah, that was that was neat. But uh, so planner play, as you can see, I was taking a look at my filming schedule. I already have Monday and Wednesday filmed. Empties I'm gonna replace, I think, with my cloth and paper unboxing. This planner play, if I can get it edited really quick, I'll probably get it thrown up and you guys can, can see it. Maybe I'll just move those a little bit more into frame so you can see them. And then I've got some things going on. So Balm Dayton on the block, I have to film. I have, I have to finish editing uh, basically the evolution of making a planner insert, which I'm not even gonna finalize because I wanna play with it some more. And I will show you that insert in this video because you're gonna see me working on it. So in terms of my goals section, I Cloth and Paper did release their five-year plan, which is great because I will be able to have it in my, in my big size here. 
I still have not filled in goals. I've been toying with an idea of what goals I do want to fill in realistically for one month, three months, six months, one year. It's kind of a work in progress and I've been really hesitant to fill this out because I just feel like it's going to either change so much or I didn't really want to make a mistake and then have to start over. So that I have not gotten to. This guy I keep recycling. The one nice thing about these minimal goals planning, which are just, you know, weeks by cloth and paper, is that even if this is when you did the date range, you can restart at any time. If you find that that particular goal format works for you, you can keep reusing it. If something needs to be tweaked, you can tweak it, write it in a different color, and you're good to go. So write it out, expenses versus spending. I am back there. This, I think, is a little bit more long tail than one week. I think this is something you really need to do routinely throughout and continue to do and revisit as well as what to clip because what I find is we do develop buying patterns. So sometimes we seem like we're in a really good place where we're not mindlessly spending money then all of a sudden there's a period where it seems like we're spending a lot of money and then we kind of get back and I think what it is is if you continue to track when you can see that pattern, it becomes very easy to say, okay, when all of a sudden I seem to be spending a lot of money, what else is going on? Because if you can pinpoint what else is going on, you might find that your spending doesn't really have anything to do with spending, but with some other feelings that are coming up or that you're working through and maybe you're relying on shopping to do that. So so that really is is a good thing to learn from this. You know, making making a list, making sure it's something that I toy with but never really seem to do, which I think is part of my problem, is instead of spending money knee-jerk reaction, taking that money and just throwing it into savings and building savings that way, being like, okay, well, I want, you know, this, this palette or this piece of jewelry or this lipstick. Well, instead of buying it, let's put that money into savings and pool that money. You know, set a period for yourself, whether it's a couple of weeks, whether it's whether it's a month, whether it's, you know, quarterly, and just say, look, let's put this money into savings, build savings. And I think what will happen is, as you start to build savings, you will find that it's going to make it a whole lot harder to justify those little purchases because as that savings gets bigger, that money, you're going to be able to put into the bigger things that you want to do that you can't do because you're spending the small money and not really growing the big money. And I think that is something that I am going to to really start focusing on. Yeah, my no spend, we're not even gonna talk about this. However, we did we were finally able to get my daughter's swing set. So I am excited about that. And the reason I'm excited about that is she's two and last year we didn't really need this is some of the stuff in gray is stuff that I, I'm not getting. So or that I have, you know, phased out. We couldn't get a swing. I'm just looking because there's something else I wanted to talk about. We couldn't really get a swing at the beginning of of spring slash summer. COVID really, with everyone being home, everything sold out because people who didn't have those things really wanted to get those things. We were late to the game. So by the time we got there and we're like, we really, we really need to get this for the kiddo. You know, it's time, it's time, it's time. You know, and last year we were like, we just take her to the park, whatnot. And it was super easy. It was too late, everything was sold out. Stuff's finally back in stock. And it turns out when we ordered it from the Home Depots, Home Depot, shout out, very grateful for this. Their shipping is super fast. Stuff wasn't really all supposed to be here until Wednesday. It might be here as early as tomorrow for most of it. Doesn't mean my husband's gonna be able to get it put together before the end of the week when, he, when he's actually able to. But it was just, it was nice to see how quickly that shipping process happened because with so many things right now, Shipping's really, really delayed, and quite frankly, I was expecting we were gonna have to wait weeks to potentially months to get this, and we were gonna be in the fall before the kiddo could have a swing. She's excited, I showed her pictures. I don't think it's gonna dawn on her until it's actually up, what is going on, and that leads me to the next thing. So, how you want to feel. So I use the Danielle Laporte Desire Mapping Program uh, books, journaling exercises. There are things you can sign up for when you get her planner which is right here and I'm trying to get back into, to actually do, got stuff stuck to it, I don't know what it is. Okay, that's my template. So, you know, like this guy here that can actually help you with prompts and things like that. And I had sort of kind of these working ideas of what I was using. This is a, a NARS list, something I'm looking to, 
to get into. So <laughs> I, I digress. So I was looking at these and these were kind of my words and then you're seeing just some ideas that I've had for some other content. But I just, I maybe it's because 2020 has been a huge dumpster fire that the words I chose beginning of 2020 or right before 2020 for 2020 just don't seem to line up with 2020 anymore. I, every, I just wanna walk around being like, everything is just bullshit right now. It's all just bullshit. So that is kind of a thing in my life. And then I have some highlighters that I was working on. I just realized I had that completed. All right, so here's where I started pen testing. Not this guy. This guy is a different pen. So this is my Monami Plus Pen S that I got from Cloth and Paper. I'm not sure where else you can get these because I haven't seen them anywhere else. And then I used my Tombow N89 here on the purple, on the purple Crayola Take Note to highlight and it did not seem to smear. You do want to let these have a little bit of dry down time, more so the highlighters. I get that, uh, I get that sometimes we think kids shouldn't be writing in pen until a certain age. I don't ascribe to that, quite frankly. If you're ready to write in pen, you're ready to write in pen. I've already, I already had some things down on here in terms of my weekly. I'm gonna use it with this sheet and I'm going to do the week's beginning instead of the week's end. Week's end, I'm torn on where to put on, on where to put these and I think you almost need to sandwich just one sheet, one week at the beginning, at the end of the week, and then you don't have to worry about where you're putting it in your planner. That's just me, so I already used the purple. I was just pulling off some of the, their gel, so they've got, they've got the, the little covers on them. So I was pulling those off. These are, what are they? These are the ombre pens. So it's three coordinating colors. You can kind of get an ombre effect. Personally, I don't really care about that. I just like different colors of ink. And as much as I try to be a minimal planner and minimalism resonates with me, colored pens just have a soft spot in my heart and that is where I deviate from being minimal. It's a thing. So nourishing thoughts and intentional actions for this next week. Like I said, 2020 has been a dumpster fire. My positivity is all but gone at this point. Like it has, it has literally, the building is on fire and positivity has jumped out the window and like negativity and disinterest are just sitting together in the room going, we're just gonna wait, see how this pans out. Maybe we'll get rescued, maybe we won't. I don't really know, I'm just gonna sit here. So again, optimism has kind of left the building for me at this point. So nourishing thoughts and intentional actions. Uh, this week is gonna be hard. I, I had to catch up on stuff for the office today and that took up a, a chunk of time. I just, hurting my foot, I fell behind with being out for a day. I'm gonna be out for another day this week because I have to see a specialist. Could only arrange it in the middle of the day. Could I have tried to like work around it for a half a day? Yeah, but I have found that that gets very taxing for me because then I feel like I'm rushing to get the kiddo up and get me ready and get her off to off to school. We call it daycare school. It's a thing, deal with it. I feel like then I'm rushing back to get to work and then I'm rushing, 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 rushing. And I'm already feeling like, like that anyway. So, trying to work around a schedule where I don't know how long I'm gonna be, is there gonna be traffic? Are they gonna send me for additional testing? I just took the entire day. But that means I have to make sure that I, I'm on top of the things I was already behind on. So nourishing thoughts and intent, intentional actions. Focus, if it, if it looks like it's kind of being being itchy, it's not. There's still there's still a little bit. I don't have any tissue over here. There's still a little bit of that of that plastic coating on it. Pull that off there. I have a pen all over my hands now. All right. Focus on the priorities. Yeah, yeah. That's about as optimistic as I can get. Doesn't make me feel optimistic. All right, intentional actions I want to take this week. What do I want to be intentional about this week? <laughs> Again, positivity has left the building. So maybe what I want to focus on this week, ooh, that's a really pretty blue. Maybe what I want to focus on this week is finding the positive. Look, silver linings are silver linings and sometimes the bad things that happen are the bad things that happen. 
hurting my foot makes me take stock in the fact that I do have to take better care of myself. It's a thing. <sighs> hurting my foot and not knowing what caused it also could mean a couple of things. It could mean that when my daughter put her knee on my foot and then tried to stand up that it was just a deep bruise and it's going to heal and it's just being more conscious of how she's climbing on me so that I don't get injured. Or, you know, maybe it's, hey, I'm getting older. Things that might not have hurt me in my 20s are now going to be a thing and being more mindful of how I'm treating myself. So to me, that is the positive right now. I. I don't know. What other, I, don't, I don't know what other positive there is. It's not really proactive healthcare. It's reactive healthcare because I got injured. I don't know how I got injured. So right now I can't really do anything to prevent it. I don't know what's injured. So I just, uh, y'all know y'all are with me. Somebody who's watching this going, yep, I've been there. I gotcha. I, I understand it. And I'm like, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. We're all as equally frustrated. Here's the green one, which is beautiful for the devotion. I always have a really hard time with devotion and gratitude. I think I have a hard time with gratitude, not because I have a hard time with gratitude, but because I always feel like when I say I'm grateful for something, it's so petty and so small. Like, I, you know, oh, I'm grateful for this, but it just, I don't know. The gratitudes always seem silly. And when I say I'm grateful because it always seems, again, just silly so I get stuck on these usually what I find for these guys is about midweek I find something to actually fill in here it's like the week has got to get going I can't really this isn't really predictive sections or things I need to do this is this is this is not a what I want to focus on this is uh this is where the week has started and taking stock in midweek and then you know keep on rolling and then week's end, we'll see week's end, we'll have a reflect and envision what's not working and what's stopped doing. I was really, really good at what the what's not working and stopped doing, but what I figured out is that I'm constantly putting down the same stuff for not working and stopped doing, which basically means I'm putting stuff down and I'm not actually taking corrective action. So we're gonna write here, corrective action. And what, you, what you'll find is I have a tendency to break into cursive on things that are super important. So I started to on the V and the E. I also, I was, I was listening to something and they, they had us put down, you know, our, our intention for how we feel about ourselves. And I started to write it. And I literally, this is from Billy Boss. Yeah. You can find her on Facebook. She's, she's real interesting, really inspiring. I, I enjoy her quite a bit. But by the end, I was writing in cursive. And what I realized is it started as something that was like, I was just, my brain was like, oh, this is a trivial exercise. You know, I run into this stuff all the time. And it turned into something super meaningful for me. So for me, the super meaningful stuff always ends up being in cursive. I find the same thing with my creative writing. When it comes to planning, it'll probably be in print. When it comes to actual creation, it's in cursive. Just how my brain works, fun fact. All right, so planning, I'm just going through. There's a long tail project I've been working on. Half of it's over because half of it I figured it out. <laughs> I already know that it's something's not gonna work for me and there's something that is, that I've got some notes on, on something that I already talked about, it's already up. It might already be up. I think this is my work from home update. And then this was the original pen test. So you can see the highlights. I'll show you the highlight here. So what you get for the highlight, we'll just come down here to the project results section. I can't, let's see if I can just zoom you in a little bit more. Hey, hey. dude, I, do I love that armature at times? Yes, yes, I do. Yes, I do. So it kind of has a marker feel to the tip when you write with these, but it, that plastic makes it more pen-like, which is really neat. So if you like, kind of like a marker feel to your writing, these are, these uh, Crayola take note are right up your alley. So the, here's the highlighter end again. It's clear, it's magic changing ink, color changing ink. See, look at that, look at that, look at that. The only thing I don't like is it almost seems to fuzz a little bit. And I don't know if that is the ink bleeding or if that is just the reaction the pen has. Now this one turned pink. So let's see if it's ink specific. So I'm, gonna, I'm, assu I'm assuming it is. I'm assuming I'm assuming that purple turns pink and the dark blue turns a lighter blue, but let's just take this edge and we'll just test it here with the bottom of my eye. 
yeah okay all right so it's not the color change isn't in here what this is the reactor and this is what reacts now let's just see if it's yours um i've already used the light gray so let me take this is my tombow opal 910 i really like this one as well so let's just Oh yeah, that, that, see how that smeared? So I'm assuming these guys do kind of, that ink smears. What, I'm going to be honest, I'm not surprised by that because it is something that has to react. It's probably not drying down the same way something that's not expected to react would. You just, you don't get quite the, the smear effect that you would get between these two. This is going to smear more. This is intended to be used with the pen. So just a heads up, traditional highlighting is going to be a problem with these. Now, I should keep my pen out. What about traditional highlighting with my friend, my chubby friend here? So we'll do the same thing. Yes, I do. These are slightly wider gel pens. And you can see here that that is probably going to smear. So I'm going to give it some dry down time, maybe fan it a little bit. So you can see where I put a lot of pressure like here, the second half, and then up here, you can see that that did not dry down quickly whatsoever. Now, at the same time, again, maybe if you're using these, they're more for an artistic purpose than they are for just taking notes. If you're planning on using them just to take notes, just be aware you might get some smearing. Ooh, what is going on? That's really bizarre. All right, I was not expecting that. Because remember, I, I did test with the gray. All right, well, let me try a different, let me, let me try a different color pairing. So I took that gray out, that Tombow N89. And I'm gonna take my pink, chunky wonky here. Which one do I wanna take? I'm gonna take the kind of purpley one. And, ooh, that's pretty. I'm gonna call it chunky. And when I first tested it, I didn't, it's not like I let it dry. These have been, these guys up here have been drying for a hot minute. So we'll, we'll do two tests. So first let's do the ombre gels. That didn't really seem to bleed. Ombre gels, those didn't seem to bleed at all, did they? A little bit? No, they don't look, don't look, don't look. All right, so let's try chunky. No, that one didn't bleed either, did it? No. Let's go over. All right, so when it starts to bleed, the more the more I go over it, so a spot where I doubled up looks like it bled a little bit, but not quite the same. I can take a darker color. I'm gonna stick with the opal here. I wanna see if maybe the opal, because I do know I have a lot of problems with the opal. So I wanna see if maybe the opal is an issue. So let's do another chunky here. All right, and we'll go back to the top. Now this is the testing though with the ombres. See, I can see with the opal that it definitely did pull a little bit. Okay. All right, hold on. I'm gonna get this chunky a fair shot. I let this one. I let this one get a bit of time. I can also see that it picked up on the on the marker. We're gonna go with the clean side. I can see that it bled where I overwrote. Okay, so that pink bleeds less. So what I would caution with the Crayola ombre pens is some of them are going to get more bleed when you highlight than others. This green got bleedy, this pur purpley pinky got bleedy from the highlighter pen. The pink, the pink on both of these from the ombre pen did okay. There was a little bit here where I went over, so it was thicker, probably not as dry. These guys, so all of these are from the pink pen, did just fine with that particular gray the purple started to bleed so the more saturated colors are probably going to have more more time 
more ability, sorry, more time to dry because they're going to have a higher propensity for bleeding. And it might also, just so you know, this is this guy. I'm not sure, not sure which guy I did this with. I'm not sure if this, this is this guy, my Kako, or where's my other, where's my black brown? Here it is. Or if it's my Sakura black brown, but bled. And that is my, that is definitely my Tombow 942 highlighter. And it bled. Let's see. Many, 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 many days later, no bleeding right after writing bleeding. So just be aware, gel pens, gel pens are worse than, gel pens can be worse than ballpoint pens in terms of bleed. So just a heads up on that, but, but there you go. And that really, that really is, I'm just gonna move the, the armature back up here. All right. So that is really it in a nutshell in terms of planning really over the next week, there, there isn't anything. I'm out of the office, which I already had blocked off because I knew I was gonna be out. I've got some things going on towards the end of the week and making sure that I continue working with my planner play. I've already blocked off the week before here using my Ollie clip. Speaking of, my two other large Ollie clips are coming and hopefully on Monday, my cloth and paper box will be here so I can record that. So I'll have three large Ollie clips. I really do like this small one. I should probably get more. We'll see how many pages it holds. If, it, if I can actually hold an entire month in it, which it seems like I can, this is what this Ollie clip will be used for because I really like that. If I need to go back and reference, I'll go back and reference, but I don't really need to go back and reference all the time. So that works out nicely. So there it is. That is my life in a nutshell. My cloth and paper quilted caviar Cover. She's beautiful. She's soft. I still like her. I can really feel the pebble texture of the leather. She smells beautiful. Let me give you a little chunky porn here. I'm not monetized, so if I use that word, I'm not worried about getting demonetized. So hit subscribe, like my videos, help me get monetized. This is the bottom. I like the I like my unlabeled tabs on the bottom because I start with filming schedule, and then I have my goals, my schedule, and then I have a section here that I'm going to be using for something, I just don't have it in there yet. And I might change my mind on that, and then just my notes, paper, paper. And then the pocket I made, since I don't think that's up yet, just give you a little sneaky peeky here on my pocket. I did not make the pocket in the video, but I'd talk about it <laughs> because I didn't think to film it. Why, why, why would I Why would I film making a pocket? I don't know. Mostly I just wanted to show you that if you have things you love in your own home, I just took some cardstock, some washi tape, and then here I just had a, a sticky pocket that I threw on there. You can make yourself things that you really, really love and are special to you because you made them. You don't have to go out and purchase these things. Is it nice sometimes to get something that's pre-made and perfectly fits and professional and beautiful and all that good stuff? Absolutely. But you know what? Sometimes it is just nice to be like, you know, I'm going to make my own. I'm going to see how this works. And if it works, it works. And then you have yourself a quality pocket. Now it is single sided. It is not dual sided. Could you easily, easily, easily make this pocket dual sided? Absolutely. It also means you have control over how you make the pocket. Maybe you want to make it, you know, a nice, nice little diagonal all the way through. Maybe you want to shorten it. Maybe you want the pocket up much higher. Again, customization is completely up to you because you've made it. And this, I just used the washi tape for decoration. Not just for decoration though, is it? It's holding together this side. It's reinforcing my punches. Just saying, make your own. There is no shame in that game. Just make your own, it works. And now I'm going to say much love and I'm going to call it. I'm gonna take an emotional break. I watched Rock Christie's Beauty from Rock, sorry, I can't talk. Raw Christie, Raw Beauty Christie. Why do I keep saying her name wrong? Cause I just wanted to call her Christie. I watched her video this week, wanted to cry for her. I, 
and have I been there. If you if you don't watch her channel, just watch her channel and give her some love. And it sounds like it sounded like from somebody else I watched and from other comments I was seeing on her most recent post that some people have been less than nice to her. And let me tell you, nothing makes people want to fight you more than being nasty to somebody who's going through something that can be emotionally charged and is kind of wearing their heart on the sleeve and sharing sharing what they're going through. So just, you know, as always, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't just don't say anything at all. Look, or if you're going to criticize somebody harshly, not even criticize, it's not even criticism. If you're going to be a nasty person, just just don't. Just don't because we don't need to be doing that to each other. And I get that I'm sure that there are some people who maybe posted comments that were taken the wrong way or they were trying to come from a good place or a helpful place. Unfortunately, that is also the problem with comments is sometimes we say things with the best of intentions, but people kind of read into things we say, you know, and, and certainly if it's, you know, commenters or watchers of videos fighting with each other, it might be that maybe you said something again that meant one thing, somebody took it a completely different way and ran with it. So just, you know, be, be, be careful. If you want, if you want to be helpful, might be, be a little bit more cognizant that the words we use unfortunately don't always have a common meaning. Sometimes they have different meanings and different connotations to different people. And we have to be a little bit more careful when we're typing in, you know, the online sphere because we're not always able to express or to, you know, give face and voice to to those words we're using. So, you know, I I know I know it's and I kind of fall along the lines of your feelings are your feelings and your feelings are your own responsibility, but at the same time just on sensitive subjects, sometimes sometimes we do have to be careful and believe me, I have I have typed comments and I have said things that uh you know, to people that that I realized after the fact, I'm like, whoa, that came across harsh, or whoa, that, that that doesn't that doesn't really sound or convey what it is I meant to actually convey, and I I will edit because the last thing you want is for someone to mistake something, especially if you're well well meaning. So that's it's just that's what I'm gonna say about that. Power of words, right there, <laughs> right there. But uh, yeah, I, I, again, she's. She's a she's going to be a new mama who's who's sharing about her journey and her struggles and her fears in a very open and vulnerable way that I don't know that I would have ever been able to have done. And I had, you know, similar situation to hers. So Raw Beauty Christy, she is a fabulous beauty YouTuber. Go check her out. Just just give her some love and just you know, whether you agree or not or whether you're into beauty or not, it it never hurts when we we see someone going through something to just kind of, you know, to give them a little thumbs, give them a little thumbs up, give them some love, let them, let them know they're not alone out there. So yeah, well, I think that, I think that's all there is to, to everything. <laughs> um, not solving the world's problems here. That is for sure. Not even solving my own at this point, but, uh, I will catch you guys in the next one. And as always much, much love and stay safe out there. Hey there, I thought I would do just a, a quick intro, maybe this would be an outro, who knows? It's gonna depend on where it goes in my editing and if my laptop decides to restart for no reason again. Fortunately, I didn't lose anything, but I cleared out space, so it has space. I don't know why it just restarted itself. It's making me very angry and there isn't a whole lot I can do about it. I wanted to kind of show you the blush this lighting really isn't giving it direct sunlight, gives it some, some awesomeness. So give me one quick second, let me see if I can remedy this. We're just going to selfie light. Cool light, warm light, both. I really like the bowl. Yes, it's gonna reflect in my glasses while aware of it, nothing I can do about it, but it kind of gives you, there's a little bit of sheeniness that's not the NARS matte, that's my oily skin and a little bit of the eyeshadow that has dropped and fallen. So I'll take glasses off, so we're not, we're not getting that, because that, that, it bugs me when I'm filming, I get that, get that glare. But I just noticed it's it just, it worked out so nicely. I used the Natasha Denona Metropolis palette. I really like it, I just went kind of naturalish. It's about a billion degrees here. 
thank you humidity it's gross it's gross outside is what it is but I thought I would just show that and maybe this will go on the end <sighs> my little ranty 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 that I might have to cut it off when I'm editing who knows sometimes I leave that stuff in sometimes it's just fun because I feel like that's more me I feel like when I edit I cut out more stuff that is more more of who I am and how I feel I'm sitting awkwardly at my desk and just try to uh slam my footrest sideways <laughs> than if I just let it in and let you see a little bit about who I am but I kind of got chatty I got chatty because you know it is what it is it's Sunday and I always have all these ideas before I start filming of the things I want to say and unless I script that stuff most of it never really makes it into the videos so I think I have these really nice intellectual type topics and kind of segue into stuff that, you know, at, at the end of the day, I'm just like, hey, I sat down and started filming and didn't have what I wanted to say to you written down. And since I don't use a script most of the time, I say most of the time because some of the time I do, some of the times I do have things that are scripted. But that's stuff that I plan on doing that way and I didn't really plan on Pyre Play being scripted. But yeah, it's a thing. I digress. But isn't that nice? Isn't that selfie light nice? Let me change, let me change the setting. Let's just... Find the button. So that's without it. That's with the cool light. Don't you like how the iPhone is automatically trying to work with it? It's not even connected to it, but it's trying. The iPhone itself is trying to fix the lighting to accommodate it, and it actually does some nice things. See, it's nice when I move in. I mean, you just you get a really better look. And there's the cool or cool, the warm. This particular eyeshadow from the Metropolis palette, well, these two eyeshadows that I use, the warm actually shows them much more nicely than the cool. The cool kind of fights with it because it's a warmer tone. And then there's both. And I like both because it's a nice balance of the brightness and the warmth together to just, mwah, to just give you a little kiss. Just give you a little kiss on the cheek. It's like, hi, I like you. Let's play. Mwah. I just have to remember to use it more. I do like it when I do use it. So that is that. Much love as always. Thank you for hanging out with me to the scraggly ends here. That printer box behind me on the floor under the window, there's a hole cut into it because it's for the cat. The cat doesn't appreciate expensive toys that we buy her. She's got her box, cut a hole in it. She's good. It's great. It's fabulous. She's awesome. We love her that way. So much love and I will catch you 